You have the illusion that national politics continues as it always did. You still have the same institutions, the same leaders, etc. But uh, they have their authority is is retreating to smaller and smaller parts of national life. So national leaders do control borders. They do control security and all these kinds of things. Um, but they are less and less able to actually change the material conditions of their populations, which is why these things like borders and security become so important. Um, and we're seeing even as, as leaders become more and more aware of their own impotence, they have to produce facsimiles of power in more and more extravagant ways, um, which is why they start appealing to things which are which all leaders do in these kind of moments, um, to xenophobia, to, to nationalism, to mythological pasts, um, and indeed to war. Uh, but as I say, none of this solves the problem of the crisis of the system itself. I think the things that are convincing people that the nation state is in this moment of resurgence uh, are just hysterical symptoms. There is a resurgence, of course, of various kinds of nationalism, uh, a huge intensity around borders, migration, and things like this, jobs. Um, for me, um, I think that these are symptoms of a crisis in the, in the national structure, which has to do with the last 30 or 40 years uh, especially of the spatial reorganization that has been part of globalization. This spatial reorganization of, of production, um, as well as the globalization of finance, now means that uh, national leaders have much, much less authority over national society, economy, space than they did uh, in the 1960s. Um, and that is what is producing this kind of backlash. But the backlash itself is not going to be effective. We can't return to the economy that we had in the 1960s. We are one integrated planetary system. Um, and things like um, finance have worked out extremely genius ways of, of sidestepping national authority. Um, and the only way to capture certain flows of the contemporary is at the global level. Inequality, of course, is, is hugely important in all this um, because essentially elites um, in the rich world and increasingly in the, in the poor world um, have, have extracted themselves from the national system. Elites have uh, their money dispersed globally, their investments are dispersed globally, and they have less and less stake in national space. They no longer pay taxes to the level that they, they once did. So their relationship to the nation is very, very weak, um, and many of them are domiciled outside of their, their, their home countries, uh, pay taxes outside of their, their home countries. Whereas for the majority of people, the nation is very much a reality. They don't have that kind of freedom of space. They, they, they have to pay taxes in their home countries. They, they're dependent on, on welfare and security from their own countries. Um, and so inequality is not just a material condition. It's a, it's a, it's a kind of increasing spiritual um, disillusionment with the national system. So I think, you know, since the very beginning of the nation state, um, if we go back many centuries, it has been a form of bargain between the sovereign and the people in which the sovereign guarantees certain things like security uh, and the people pay taxes. Um, and in the 20th century, that promise became an extremely generous one. It was no longer just the promise of protection, but a promise of, of great financial security and even kind of spiritual development. So nation states um, made provision for, um, very generous provision for education, healthcare, the arts and culture, all those kinds of things. Um, and it was, a, it was a promise that coincided with a great great equalization of economic opportunity in the West after the Second World War, which meant that these 
these societies began to have a kind of homogeneously middle class um, outlook, uh, a middle class expectation of, of um, what the state would do, a set of ethics based on work, taxes, and, and all those sorts of things. Um, in the last four decades, that promise has been reversed. And increasingly, those people who have those kind of middle class expectations have been disappointed. The middle classes are the primary target right now of the global system, the Western middle classes. Money is taken away from the Western middle classes and, and dispersed elsewhere, especially in Asia. Um, and one of the main objectives of technological innovation right now is to further weaken the Western middle classes and to take away from them their bargaining power with the global economy. So the middle classes are extremely shattered by, uh, by the withdrawal of what they thought was a kind of in eternal situation with the nation state. Uh, actually, it wasn't an eternal situation at all. It lasted just three or felt four decades. The, the nation state is extremely ingrained in our, in our psyche. Um, it's not going to go away. Um, I think that in a, in a good world, in an ideal world, we would have the intelligence to plan for the decades to come with more local and regional power and more trans transnational and global power. We can definitely imagine nation states collapsing. We, we are seeing um, national crises in, in Spain, in England, in all kinds of places right now. Um, and the, one of the reasons that we can, we can actually imagine a peaceful transition in these scenarios is because of the EU. It, it would be strange if we were that clever or that intelligent. Um, I think we are, we are going to see um, very severe kinds of crisis. I think it's quite clear that war will be a very useful form of distraction from a lot of the things that are going on. In the last couple of centuries, we've essentially been rolling out the national pro project, which began in Europe and then has spread to the entire world, so that in the 20th century, we, we started with about 70 nation states and we ended with 150 or 170 or whatever it might, is today. Um, I think that project is over and um, we, the, the, the countries that started it, the European countries, have already tried to move beyond it. Um, I think that that, um, that is what our next task is. Oh!